dreams are for the night time. Days are wide awake. Visions are for crazy men. I mean, for goodness sake, but I'm seeing things. I'm seeing things. Look at the rooster over here. Hey, Ma. Mark. Mark. I'm going to hurt you. Oh, yeah. Hannah. Look at the fact you watch it. Oh, oh, he's never seen a rooster, my son. I can't tell you. It's oh, crazy. Louie, look. Those little yeah, pigs. Yeah, pigs. I come 200 miles to see a thing with a snout like that. Look at it. Hey, now, hey, listen, you. I paid for this weekend in the country so you could save your marriage. And if you don't start relaxing and enjoy yourself, there's going to be such a problem. Don't hit me, Ma. Hello. 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 Oh, who the hell is this now? You must be... That's your conies. Oh, and you must be Mr. and Mrs. Wood. Now you call me Alma, oh, and this man. is my husband, Grant. Hello, How Grant. do you do? I'm Al. How do you do? This is Anna. Yeah, and this is my daughter-in-law, Marjorie. Hi. And this is you. my son, Louie. Hi, pleased to meet you. Hey, Louie. Pleased to meet you. <laughs> you always stand like this. Like what? Well, now, let's get the bags inside. I've got a nice farm dinner all ready for you. Oh, great. I'm very starving and hungry. You know those cinnamon glazed raisin crescent rolls? Well, how would he know that? <laughs> my husband's a baker. Oh, and now he knows these things about everything. You have to tell him what I do for a living? No, I was only making conversation. Next thing you know, you're going to have me in the kitchen making Good, a cake. It's nothing fancy. Well, if we wanted for him, see, we'd go to the Ramada Inn. <laughs> You keep those goats on a rope most of the time, don't you? Oh, Louie, look at this bed. Do you know what this would cost in an antique store in Toronto? What the hell's that funny smell? Fresh air. Fresh air? What, Louie? What? What the heck do people do around here? What are you, a teenager? Same thing they do everywhere else in the world. They eat, they sleep, they work. I don't think I can take this. Oh, it's a weekend, three days. Come on, you'll survive it. Why don't we just go back to the townhouse, right? I mean, Jason's at the computer camp. You can make a little barbecue in the backyard. You'll feel like you're in the country. Yeah, and what about your mom and dad? How are they going to feel? They treated us to this weekend. Now, come on. And you said to me, oh, I want to get out of the city. I want to be a neutral territory so I can work on our relationship. Now, don't quit on me. That's fresh air. It's fresh air. It's weird. Mm, it's beautiful. Ah. <sighs> what the heck is that? I'm gonna roost the crows at four thirty in the morning. Don't you have any hired help here? Not since I started taking in visitors. Had one fellow, an executive or something, come up for a weekend, dug me 200 post holes. Good and deep, too. Said it was the best vacation he ever had. <laughs> you figure it. Maybe I ought to start giving bakery vacations, huh? That'd go over real good. Uh, and give them a little more, Pete. A little, little more, eh? Well, you guys must eat a lot. Come on, Lou, hurry up. What the heck is this? Come on. What is this? We're going down to the lake. You too? I'm going to stay oh, here. I'm not going on, on this. Stop talking. Like Are you that. kidding me? I'm going on this. I haven't been on a bike for years. Come on, Where Lou. Where's your sense of adventure? Get on. And see this? You have a fishing pole, and maybe you'll do a little fishing there. Oh, yeah. What are we going to do tonight? Read Anna Green Gables by candlelight? Now, enough of that. I told you to relax. Ah. Relax. All right. <laughs> Right, what is this here? Come now on. leave the kickstand. No, 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 no. Can't okay. you pretend we're here? Okay, now this I am guiding. Okay, have a good time. Yeah, yeah, mental talk. Okay, pedal. Ah! Okay. All right. Can I stand up too? Help her a little. What's the matter? Oh, what's the matter? Oh, what's the matter? Oh, what's the matter? 
So what do you think? About what? About moving to the country. You've been here for 18 hours, and now you're going to emigrate? It'll be nice for Jason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got too much fresh air in your brain, Marjorie. <sighs> What's wrong with wanting a fresh start? What kind of life do you think we have in the city? I'm running around working like a crazy person. You are a crazy person, having all those visions. Hey, listen, if I didn't want to, I wouldn't. I just ignore them, that's all. Wait a minute. You mean you could stop having those visions? I didn't say that. No, 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 I can't stop having them. But it's like, like Luther says, the birds can fly over your head, but you don't have to let them make a nest. I would just ignore them. I got willpower. Great. Now you want to move to the country? I wasn't talking about moving to the country. You were. But why don't we just buy a little cottage and we'll fool around on weekends, okay? A lot of people do that. I hate you. I don't know. It's kind of middle class, isn't it? Well, that's what we are, my dear. We are middle class. How the hell did that happen? I don't know. I think it has something to do with me losing my hair. Middle class? I'm not ready for it. Okay, that's it. I ate. What are we going to do now? Relax. Enjoy yourself. Look I... at the sky. Look at the trees. Why don't we uh, go for a bike ride or something? Why don't you go fishing? You get on my nerves. All right, I will. What do I do? I just throw it in, right? Cast it like? No, well, no, you got to release it first. Let's... Release what? Oh, I caught a tree. You see that little gizmo? So I release this, right? Now cast and release it. Move your finger. Right, that's all. No more instructions. What are you? Big Red? You ask. Like your own fish show? I don't want a hook in my eye. Watch out. Woo! Look at that. Dun, 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 dun. I think I got something already. Beginner's luck. Lost it. Lou. Lou, what is it? It's nothing. No, you had a vision, didn't you? A vision? Stop it. No, 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 no. I snagged my line here. Oh, look at that. I got a little sticker. Oh, it hit you in the head a little bit, but other than that, it's fine. That's all the fishing I want to do for today, I'll tell you that much. Want a little coffee or something? Maybe tea? What do we got here? Tea, mm. right? Mm. Weak herbal tea. Mm. So what was it? It was um, a skeleton. A skeleton? Yeah, like in Halloween. Oh. And I had a vision of some guy who was shot and fell in the lake. <gasps> but we are not going to deal with any of this. He's going to forget completely about it. So you're going to forget about it? That's what I said, yes. We agreed, you know? Right. Where was it, Louis? About 20 yards, right out there. I can't believe I'm going to do this. Well, you have to. I can't swim. Somebody's got to go. Come on, hurry up before it gets stuck down there or something. Do the boat to the left, Marge! Of course, you can't hear me. Afternoon. Good afternoon. You'd be from the city, I expect. Yeah, why? Because most local folks can read a sign like that. Which part didn't you understand? Are you the police? Yep, my name's Constable. I'm the local fuzz. Constable, that's a good name for it. Is that woman Pearl diving out there? No, not exactly. So what's she doing exactly? What she's exactly doing is she's looking for a human skeleton, which I caught on this fishing rod here, and then I dropped it, so she went in to get it. There's no fishing allowed here. I'm going to have to give you a ticket. There's a human skeleton in this lake, officer. I think I see it, Lou. Is that woman out there naked? No. Public nudity isn't a big favorite here. You could be looking at a three-figure fine, my friend. I've got it, Louie. I've got it. You're looking at a human, human hand. Look at that. How you doing? Oh, Hello, not too oh, baggy. Same old thing, the same old way. Do you want a cup of coffee, Orville? Don't mind if I do. This here is Mr. and Mrs. Ciccone. They're up visiting from the city. Oh, how the Mr. How... Ciccone's a reporter with the Toronto Gazette. Would you folks like some coffee? Actually, oh, I'd thanks. love a coffee. You don't want one? I want one, thanks. They were picnicking, and Mrs. Ciccone took a little swim in Turtle Lake. That's mighty brave of you. She got a little water in her ear. 
Thought you might have some drops. I certainly do. Oh, with all the fertilizers and junk that's dumped in that lake, you got to be careful. You never know what kind of infection you could get. Now, you come on with me. Okay, it's this ear, the left ear. Oh, okay. It's not just uh, fertilizer in that lake. I was fishing, right? And I came up with a lot of bones. <laughs> well, I'm not surprised. Snapping turtles in there come right up on shore and drag a sheep into the water just for the sheer hellery of it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, this is not uh, uh, any kind of uh, sheep or anything like that. These are human bones, right? You saw them. I got them in the car. I said I'd take them over to the OPP so they can check them out. Might as well do that. Although I'll bet you they'll find mint sauce on them. Oh, no, this was a human skeleton. Oh. There was a skull and a rib cage and everything. I just couldn't dive down deep enough to get it all. Right. You got any missing persons around here? Oh, no. This ain't Toronto, Mr. Ciccone. Yeah. Everybody around here is accounted for, living and dead. I gotta file this story with the Toronto Gazette. You got a phone I could use, dear? Oh, I'm sorry. My phone dumped with the electrical storm last night. Storm? Storm? I didn't know there was a storm last night. Oh, there was a doozy. That's the nice part about coming to the country. Folks tend to sleep like the dead. <laughs> it's uh, really quiet around here. <laughs> is there a railway station where I could wire my story? There was one closed down. Government don't give a damn about farmers. What's the closest town? Maybe I could get there. Listen, I've got an idea. You just write up your story. I'll put it in an envelope and put it on a bus. It'll be in the city in Thank three hours. Thank you very much. You're a sweetheart, Mrs. Turner. Not only do you make good coffee, you're a nice person. Listen, you got a little pen I could use? Oh, oh no problem. And also some uh, paper. All I'll right, here you go. Thank you so much. I'll pay for it. All right. You got any money, Marge? <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, this is terrible. I'm sorry, Mr. Ciccone. We don't mean to laugh. We just can't help it. <laughs> no, what are you laughing at, though? Orville took those bones over to the OPP just to confirm what we all thought after we took a peek in the bag last night. They were sheep bones for definite. No, oh, no, no, those, those were human bones. I Believe saw me. them. You don't have to believe us. You can ask Sergeant Preston over at the OPP. Sergeant Preston? Well, uh, Mrs. Turner, can I ask you a question? Yes, dear? Remember how you said you were going to send the uh, article that I wrote to the paper? It's not in here. Oh, well, I didn't want you to look foolish on your paper, dear. That's why I didn't send off your story. Oh, you're editing now, huh? Well, uh, thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny, you're regular Johnny Carson. You're all funny, people. <laughs> now listen, Marge, please. I, I, I can't think and balance myself at the same time. I'd rather walk, okay? Oh, okay. Bad. What's going on here? I don't know. Look at this bah, bah, this crazy guy. For That's his little joke. I think that's I'm she... always appalled by their barnyard witticisms. I blame the hee-haw reruns on television. <laughs> Beg your pardon? Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, you look so... Uh, I'm Emily Carr. Emily Carr? Yes. Mother was devoted to the watercolor. Oh, pleased to meet you, Emily Carr. My name is Lou Ciccone from Toronto Gazette. This is my wife, Marge Hi. Oh, how do you do? <laughs> do you live in Beauville, Mrs. Carr? Miss. Oh, yes. I'm the town clerk, librarian, and unofficial historian. Oh, isn't that oh. wonderful? Historian. Oh, I, I bet you know everything that goes on in a town like this, eh? Well, the eye of history never blinks, Mr. Ciccone. <laughs> the eye of history. I can tell you're literary. That's a literary <laughs> reference if I ever heard one. You know, I myself have always wanted to write a very comprehensive book on a small Ontario town. Don't you think that'd be fascinating? Oh, yes. Have you heard that? Especially in the area of murder. Like, like murders are so colorful oh, in a small hey. town. Uh, Charles Bow, our founding father, was a renowned Hungarian traveler and plagiarist. Oh, that's awful. But you know, the thing that intrigues me is murder in a city is so mundane, but in the country, I bet it would be exciting, no? Well, in its early days, Beauville was renowned. <clears throat> Excuse me. Have there been any murders here in the past few years? Any violent deaths? Good question, Mark. In Beauville? Oh, gracious, no. Well, there was poor Mr. Blount. 
He drowned, right? No, he died in that terrible fire in his trailer about five years ago. His propane tanks exploded. You could see the flames for miles. Was he a local man? No, he was from Toronto. He came here for his retirement. Where did this take place? Down on Luke Harris's Creek off Gallery Road. Oh, it left a terrible burn. People used to think it was from a UFO. Have there been any other occurrences like that in the past few years? Well, there was a big scandal when Mr. Krieghoff's wife ran off with the paint salesman. Mr. Krieghoff? Right. That's yeah. fascinating. We gotta go, though, Emily. Thanks a lot. Huh? Oh, bye, Emily. Oh, nice but you me. haven't heard about... Hey, we're gonna take a lunch. Don't worry. I want to hear about everything in this town, especially your flora and your fauna. Oh, okay. See you later, hon. Luke Harris's Creek. All right. I can drive. Okay. No, What's wait. This? Stop. This is Look. Okay, these brakes. All right, stop. Stop it. Good. Ah. Good. All right, that's the creek, and that's the burn part over there. Look at that. That's yeah. going to be it. It's almost 11.30. You go and tell Mom and Pop that we decided to stay another day because we're leaving, all right? Okay, 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 Chief. Right. How are you getting back? I'll hail one of those uh, farmer things. What do you call it? Where they tractor? Do that? Tractor. I'll yeah, you tractor. got it. Good luck, Lou. What's poison ivy look like? Hello? God, you scared the hell out of me. I scared you, didn't I? Yeah, you did. You're bald. Your head looks funny in the sun. You're not exactly the corn queen yourself. No, I'm Fancy. Fancy? What's your name? Pleased to meet you. My name is Louie. Louie? Yeah. Huey Pooey. You come here often, Fancy? Yes, this is my place. But don't tell anybody, okay? No, no. I won't say anything. You must have seen the big fire then, eh? Did you? No, but I certainly would love to hear about it. It was beautiful. It was the most beautiful thing I ever seen. It's beautiful, huh? I'll show you. Huh? But be real quiet, okay? Yeah, sure. This is my house. Oh, it's beautiful. It's nice, isn't it? Very, yeah. Bald Louie. It's a nice house you got here. These are all your uh, paintings, right? Yes, every one. They're beautiful. It's all about the big fire you told me about. I told you it was my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. I can tell because you do nice flames and everything. Do you chew tobacco? Uh, no, no, I don't. I don't like people that chew tobacco. It makes everything ugly. Right. You see these three guys here? Are they carrying uh, torches? Looks like torches that they're carrying over here to this burning trailer. Torches, right? Those are just lights. It looks just like a torch, though. No, huh? Fancy, uh, did you know those three people with the torch, with the lights? Can't say. Don't say. No, but you can tell me because I'm your friend, right? No, you're not. You're just another city liar. No. Bye. No. Fancy. Don't spit on the floor. Wait, wait a minute now. Hold it. Louie said he'd be here to say goodbye. I don't know. Right, come on. You got everything, sweetie? Yes, I think so. Hey, Pop. Up there you are. Take it easy. We're just on our way and thought we'd say goodbye. And That's take right. Care and everything else, you know. Okay. You sure you want to stay, Louie? Yeah, yeah, I made up my mind. I like it here. I'm a country person. You see, Mark? I told you, once you learn to relax and forget your troubles, you'd love it here. You see that, Mom? When you're right, you're right, right? Yeah, but you stay out of the sun and wear a hat. You know how your head burns. Right. Don't worry. Okay, Give me a little darling. kiss. Bye-bye. Take care of yourself, Bye, huh? Bye, Mom. Bye, Poppy. Bye, darling. Have a good Be good. Time. Okay. Oh, listen, I paid the tab for the weekend here, yeah. but after that, you're going to be on your own, okay? Yeah, don't worry. You got right. money, right, Mom? Yeah, I can handle and it, Mom. don't be telling your mother about it. You know, she thinks I'm made of money. Come on, sweetheart. Oh, you wait a minute, Pop. Your collar's up. Oh, oh, sure. uh, don't worry about it. I like it. Okay. It's all right. You like it like that, huh? Uh -huh. It's got a hickey around his neck. Yeah, we'll wait till this case is over and I'll give you one. Have a good trip. Oh, thank you. And you know you have our number in the city, so be sure to call us. You bet. Thank you for that egg loaf recipe. I'm going to try it tonight. Egg loaf recipe? Is she ever give you the egg loaf recipe? Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. I'm safe here now. Bye, darling. 
haven't sat that close since I got the one ticket for the Wayne Newton concert. Oh, this is a great idea, Kenny. It's going to be wonderful for our relationship. <sighs> what are you doing? Oh, nothing. I'm just uh, zipping the bags together. Kenny, no, we agreed. This is going to be a two-bag outing. Oh, come on, Heather. No, we agreed. Look, at things are going to be different. We're going to see how well we get along without sex. Um, what is with you, Heather? You want to be with me? I want to be with you. I mean, why are you coming up with this test? What are you trying to prove, eh? I'm not trying to prove anything. Is this uh, some kind of build-up to... Uh, Dumping me? No, it's just things aren't as simple for me as they are for you. Oh. Sure they are. Simplest, oldest thing in the world. Man, you're all alike. Isn't there one man whose mind isn't always on the same thing? Hello? I have a collect call from a Mr. Ciccioni. Will you accept the charges? Uh, no, no, sorry, I won't. Come on, red friend, this is an emergency. It always is. All right, operator. What is it, Mr. Ciccone? Marge and I found a skeleton in a lake here in Beauville. So? So, I want you to do some digging for me. Forget it, Mr. Ciccone. I'm on my holidays. I'm going climbing for two glorious, quiet weeks. Two weeks? Uh, one week with separate bags, but two weeks. I'm on my vacation, too, okay? But things happen. Now, this will only take an hour. Now, please, what do you say? No, not this time. No! No, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. If that's the way you want it. I was hoping you'd help me crack this. I mean, it, it is a murder and it's a conspiracy that's gone on solved for five years. But if you're not interested... Uh, what kind of conspiracy? Find out everything you can about a guy from Toronto named Anthony Blount. Now, he supposedly died in a fire here five years ago, but I just fished his bones out of a lake. You call me back at 616-2524. Okay, great. Bye-bye. <laughs> Now we're getting into something here. Yeah? What's all the excitement? Oh, Marge and I were just talking about those bones we fished out of the lake, uh, Turtle Lake. Oh, I'm afraid that those sheep bones are the laugh of the town, Mr. Yeah. Ciccone. <laughs> Since when does a sheep have five fingers on its hoof? If it wasn't a sheep, why is everyone saying it was? That's what, what we want to know. I think those bones were a man named Anthony Blout who died in a mysterious fire five years ago. My, 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 isn't that a caution? Uh, slow down here. What do you mean, mysterious fire? Them propane tanks blew up. Well, then how come this girl Fancy, she keeps drawing the, the torches around it? Oh, my, my poor little Fancy. She's a simpleton, you know. She never grew up. That's why we call her Fancy. But she's not blind, is she? You want to know about that, child, you go talk to Luke Harris. Yeah. Luke Harris, why? He's her uncle. Took care of her since her mother run <laughs> off. Wasn't for him, she'd be locked up in an asylum. And someplace. that's the truth. And he'll straighten you out about the fire, too, because it was him that went in there to try to save that nice Mr. Blount. Is that a fact? Yeah. Luke had a beard at the time. Burned all the hair right off his face trying to get Blount out. You talk to Luke. He'll set you straight. Yeah. Oh, I will. I'll talk to Luke right now, right over there. No need to ride. Just cut across my two east fields. It'll put you just right up beside Luke's place. Okay. Five-minute walk. Well, I'll wait here just in case Redford calls back. Okay, good, you do that. Uh, Mr. Ciccone. Yeah? I sure hope you're wrong. This is a nice little town. Good people. Well, I hope I'm wrong, too. Mr. Harris? Luke? Now you stay out of the barn. I got my prize melons in there, and I don't want you crawling all over. And another thing, you stay away from them city people, or I'll have you in the nut house so fast, your head won't stop spinning for a week. I didn't say anything honest. Please don't let them take me away. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hey, bald Louie. Uh, something I can do for you, Mr. Ciccone? I mean, actually, you could. I, I want to ask you a couple of questions about that guy named Anthony Blout, fire. Oh, well, there. That was a long ways back. Uh, you run along now, Fancy. Go on now! Hi, Fancy. Well, I hope you didn't get the wrong idea. You got to hammer things into her head. You want her to understand. Yeah, I understand. You actually uh, were at the fire, weren't you? Oh, yeah. I was passing by and saw the fire. I had a beard then. Uh, Burned the hair right off my face. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. Tried to get in, but uh, 
As soon as I saw them flames getting too close to them propane tanks, I cut it out. You buy yourself? Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll buy my lonesome. Mm -hmm. Why do you ask? Well, I, I was just curious. Uh, you didn't actually see Anthony Blount inside the trailer, did you? No. No, uh, I saw his car and figured he was inside. You don't think anybody around here would want to kill him, do you? Anthony Blount, I mean. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Bicconi. I don't know what kind of story you're trying to create with your big city newspaper, but don't you go tying me up in it. Uh, now, Blount got burned up in the trailer, and that ain't got nothing to do with your missus finding a bunch of sheep bones in a lake. Hey, I didn't say it did, did I? Are you jumping a... a... I can see you, Fizzy! I'll just be running along. Thanks a lot. Well, now, I'm going over to Enright, dear. I've got to deliver some fancy work to the church. Can I get you anything? No. Wait a minute, are you going by the OPP station? Oh, well, I could go by that way, sure. And can you drop me off? Well, I might just as well. Okay. They're gonna pull me over for speeding anyway. That's all they ever do. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Somebody call the police? Oh, uh, I was just looking for Sergeant Preston. You got him, pretty lady. What can I do you for? Quite a hat you got there. Oh, darn. Forgot I had it on. <laughs> Boys gave it to me for kind of a joke. Oh, I'm Marge Ciccone. Oh, yeah, the mermaid from Turtle Lake. What are you up to now? Advertising swimming lessons, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's just a couple of things I'd like to discuss with you, Sergeant. Come on in and take a pew. I'm all yours. Now, I took four years of biology at the university. Oh, I approve of that. I was just telling the wife how much I approve of education for women. She's taken uh, flower medicine with her church group. And I sure as hell know the difference between a sheep skeleton and a human one. Watch the language, please. I'm a Methodist. Well, I'm a Catholic, and I know my bones. Oh, well, here they are. Look a little different out of the water now, don't they? Wait a minute, Sergeant. This isn't what I fished up out of the water. They sure are. They got old Constable's evidence tag right on them. I guess you're going to take his word for it, right? Mrs. Giacconi, old Orville may not be much of a cop. He, uh flunked the OPP correspondence course twice, but he's honest as spit. Sits right in front of me and Mama Church. Doesn't mean a damn thing. Now watch that language now. What about a man named Blout? Are you sure he died in that Beauville trailer fire? Oh, you mean that guy up from Toronto? Yeah. Sure am. Luke Harris near lost his life trying to save him. Sergeant, my husband is a famous crime reporter, and he isn't married to a fool. Now, I'm talking about evidence here. How do you know Blout was in that trailer? I have an eyewitness report to the death, and that serves me. Did you find any remains in the trailer? Nothing but a few charred bits of bone in there. That fire was hot enough to melt a bank manager's heart. <sighs> Teeth. Teeth do not burn, Sergeant. Any idiot knows that. Mrs. Giacconi, dentures do. Oh. <laughs> Listen, you know, if you would have told me you were going to keep me up here so long, I would have brought a book. Belmont, what the hell are you up to? Your bull almost killed me. Oh, he could, too, if he don't know you. Why the hell did you send me in this field here with this bull? Hell, man, he's supposed to be two fields over. Somebody must have left the gate open. Yeah, somebody must have. You coming down? No, not unless you take Merrill Lynch with you. And close the gate. Put a big lock on it. Just to spite him, I'm gonna go to McDonald's and eat everything they got in the place, except for chicken. This housekeeper they said that Mr. Spencer would be in here. Yeah, I'm getting really sick of this, Heather, you know. You said this was only gonna take a couple of minutes. It will, it will. Why don't you scale the building while you're waiting? Excuse me, sir. May I help you, young man? I'm Heather Redfern. I'd like to see Mr. Robert Spencer. I'm afraid we don't have a lady's policy here at the Pickwick, Miss. I don't want to join your stupid club. I just want to see Mr. Spencer. Mr. Spencer does not accept visitors during his quiet hour. 
Well, he'll see me. I'm an assistant crown attorney. You could be Dorothy from Oz, madam. Our sanctuary will not be breached. That's ridiculous. That kind of sexism has gone out with Queen Victoria. When Queen Victoria visited Toronto in 1883, she was not allowed to pass this vestibule. Oh, you chauvinist goop. You ought to be in the Senate. Look at you, a man. Cammie, would you come in here for a minute, please? Here, here's a man. Yeah, what am I supposed to do? Just eh? go to the man and see Mr. Robert Spence. Okay. Him out to I'm sorry, sir. Now what? We do have a dress code, you know. I'm afraid, sir, is dressed more for an Himalayan adventure than for the billiards room. Yeah. This is Kenny Walker, the captain of the Toronto Blues. Kenny Walker, you say? Yeah, that's right. My grandson has your lunch pail and your pencil case. Oh, yeah? I didn't know they were still selling that stuff. My grandson bought them at auction. He's a trivia buff. And he also has every record Tiny Tim ever made. Oh. Uh, madam. Mr. Robert Spencer, call for Mr. Robert Spencer. Oh, Mr. Spencer, can I speak to you just for a moment, please? Now stay where you are. I'll come to you. Madam. That's fine, Adolph. I'll take care of this. Uh, it's not discrimination. It's uh, just tradition, you know. Now, you bellowed. I'm sorry, sir. I've just been trying to find out about an Anthony Blount. I wondered if you had any information about him. Anthony Blount? I thought he died. Has he popped up again? Yes, on the end of Mr. Ciccone's fishing line. Oh, really? Mm. Hello? Yes. Uh, just a minute, I'll get him for you. Is that for me? Yes, for you. Thank you very much, sir. Hope I didn't keep you awake or anything with this thing ringing. Oh, that's all right. <clears throat> Just make sure the lights are off. Right. Good night. Hello? It's me, Mr. Ciccone. Hey, Redfern. How's it going? Bismally, thanks to you and your conspiracy. That sounds nice. What'd you find out about Anthony Blount? Anthony Blount was the head rat for more underhanded real estate deals and shady takeovers than anybody in the business. No kidding. A real con artist, huh? He registered companies all over the world and made them look like they belonged to other people. But actually, they were just a front for him. Now, I've got a preliminary prosecution file on him that shows him buying land, about 20,000 acres of land around Sudbury for just a few hundred dollars. I can give you the numbers of the companies he had then. Prosecution? So he was convicted for the numbers record? Oh, not Slippery Tony. He left town before they could make a case against him. Oh, he came to the country for his health. Look, let me have the numbers of the companies, okay? Right. Uh, good, good, good. Got it. Thank you. Hey, look, Redfern, thanks a lot, huh? And, and you have a ball on your holiday, will you? Bye-bye. Mr. Ciccone, what brings you to our cultural wellhead? I don't know. I guess I'm just a library person. I got a charming library here. Well, one tries. It's very hard, really, in the face of bumpkin bureaucracy. I bet you got everything anybody would ever want to know about this town right here in this building. Oh, yes, Mr. Ciccone. We may not be worldly, but we are fastidious. I guess you even got things like uh, transfers of lands, deeds. Yes, of course. I take great pride in my records. All right. Uh, why? Well, I don't know. This may be stupid, but my wife's mother's name was Enright. Well, uh, that's the name of the little town just down the road. You're kidding me. Uh, and you think your wife's family may have some connection with our colorful heritage? Well, I mean, it's just suspicious. I thought I was just looking for her roots, you know, but I mean, the town is named that? Uh, well, this seems like a beginning for a book, don't you think? Oh, it's wonderful. And I, of course, have hundreds of historical anecdotes which 
you may have room for. Oh, I think we're talking co-authorship here, don't you, Emily? Oh, oh dear. Well, you come with me. I'll just show you everything. Great. Morning, Emily. Good morning, Orville. I seen Grant Wood's fancy bicycle bill for two out there. Is a sheep doctor in here? Who? That city newspaper fellow. Oh, Mr. Ciccone. He's in the back perusing the land records. He's doing what? Uh, running through the deed register. We're going to write a book. Oh, no, you're not, Emily. I checked that bozo out this morning. You mean he's not really a famous Toronto journalist? Just a phony front. He's nothing but a damn footman for a land developer. I've been duped. That's right, Emily. You remember what happened the last time we had that problem? No. Not that again. Oh, dear. I'm protecting you as best I can, but you're going to have to help yourself. Miss Carr, how come all the parcels of land were sold to the numbered companies back in 79, and they were all bought back in one day? You look at this. How dare you lie to me, you no, no, Philistine. No. Get out! Get out! So, hold it. Hey, hold oh, no, away. Get away, you robber! Get away! No! Don't let it take me! It's hot. Is that better, Luke? Yeah, yeah, it's better. Now I'm just burning to death. I think it's easy walking back from town. This is really scary. Maybe we should get the LPP to drag the lake. For what? Luke Harris and his scuba tanks fish the real bones out of that lake and hit them somewhere. Why wouldn't he just throw them into another lake? Somebody else could come along like we did and find them, right? No, 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 no. He's hid them someplace. I gotta get into his house. Now's your chance. What? How? Alma told me they're going into town to play cards. And Luke's obliged to show up because she says he was the last big winner. All right, this is good. Look, you go play cards, right? And you tell them that I don't want to play cards because I've got a sore feet. Mm -hmm. And they think I'm a sissy anyway, right? right. Ah! It's hot! <laughs> Needle in a haystack. There's a needle. There's a skull. Uh -huh. A little obvious, but could be. Ah! But the bathroom gets in your hair, for crying out. Stay there. Mr. Blout, do you believe in reincarnation? Speak for yourself. The Grim Reaper. Looks like a collage at the Museum of Modern Art. Huh? Mm -hmm. There's somebody with a skull. I'm too fat to climb up there, huh? Any skulls up here? Speak to me, Mr. Blout. Oh, no, no. Tail down. Tail down. Nice skull. Nice skull. No, 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 no. Down. Down. No! 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 Skull on the watermelon. Variation on the body snatches. It's a dead pod. Oh, this is very pleasant. It's kind of like an organic waterbed. Very nice. How are you? Eh? Spit the seeds out. Well, I have to be out of the way I play. <laughs> no choices in the matter, eh? Well, good night. Well, now, perhaps I'd better check on Mr. Jacoby's feet. Oh, no, 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 no. His feet are fine now, Mother. They're really excellent. Oh, uh, he says I'm at his feet. All right. Okay, good night. Bye. Thanks, Alma. Okay, you too. Louis. Alas, oh, Yorick. I bought land from him, Horatio. You found it? Yes, yes, yes. Now all we've got to do is go to the cops and it's all over. Come no, on. No, no, not tonight, Louie. It's too late. We'll never get a bus. Let's get a good night's sleep and leave in the morning. All right. But he's not sitting on my side of the bed. He's not on my side either. He's sleeping with you. <laughs> a little menage a trois. <laughs>
For us, Blimey, they want our skulls. Oh my God. Guys, hang out. I got him cornered. Get your gun. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm just passing through here. Don't let me bother you or anything. They're in the barn. There's nobody in here but us pigs. You two come on out of there now, Mr. Ciccone. We just want to talk to you. Yeah? Like you talked to Anthony Blount, huh? Hold your nose. Yeah, go ahead, Luke. What are you going to do when they hear the gunshots? He's right. That was over there. Sleep like birds. They'll be over in a flash. Come on, Mr. Ciccone. You're just making this worse than it has to be. Why'd you kill Blount? Because he tried to swindle me out of your land? He was going to turn the whole area into a damned amusement park. Shut up. What's wrong with that? A nice roller coaster? The hell with this. That's fine. I just wanted a basic trim anyway. Thank you very much. Let's see. Get the community spirit. The woman is in prison! Mrs. Ciccone, are you all right? Yes, but Louis not. He's back there. Well, well come along. Show us. I gotta hide in here because there's some bad people after me, okay? Is it a game? Oh, yeah, I... it's a game. Just hide and see. I like games. Nobody goes in there because I'm a loony. Fancy, this is a secret, okay? Don't tell anybody now. I know a lot of secrets. Fancy, did you see that city fella come this way? Can't say, won't say. Talk to me, girl. I'll have you put with the crazy people, you hear? You do, and I'll tell. Tell what? Tell that I saw you shoot that other nice man down on the lake. That does it. I'm calling the crazy catchers right now. They'll take your crayons first thing. He's in the house. Fancy, you go play up at the house. You gonna cut some wood now? Yeah. Finish him! 
he moves. Don't even think about it, Luke. <laughs> Louis! All right. Everybody over here by the car. Louis! Are you okay? Are you all right? Yeah, yeah, it's the best vacation I ever had. <laughs> Miss Emily. Miss Emily, I want to thank you for what you did. I didn't know they'd shot Mr. Blount. I thought he'd died in the fire, like they said. Right. The horrible constable told me that if I didn't reverse the land purchases, he would tell the county I was past retirement age and I'd lose my job. Oh. And he told me that you were a big land developer come here to steal people's farms. Well, what made you change your mind about me? One of the things I threw at you the other day was a back issue of the Toronto Gazette. When I picked it up, I saw your byline in it, so I knew you were a crime reporter after all. Yeah, right. So I decided that if Orville lied to me about that, he might be lying about other things, so I went to Sergeant Preston. To really do your research? You know, maybe we should collaborate after all in that oh, book. You will have to work on your grammar. <laughs> that article in the Gazette isn't very well written. Oh, Bye, Sammy. Bye. Come on, Louie. We gotta hurry. We're gonna miss the bus. I, I just, what happened to Fancy? Is she gonna be okay? Oh, yeah. She's in here. Come in. She's See in here. Oh, let's go by her in the morning. Okay. Look at this. Hi, Pooey Louie. Hey, how are you? Fancy's going to stay with me now. She's going to help me with all my work in the library. Oh, good. I'm going to be a librarian. Oh, that's nice. Hmm? Hey, that's an interesting picture, Fancy. Thank you. What's the man doing? He's digging a grave. Everybody says Mr. Krakoff's wife ran off with the paint salesman. But I saw him in the woods in back of his place late one night with the shovel. Oh, he's the greatest. Well, I was getting a vision. Oh, no, 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 uh, no. Shovel? I'm hoping and wishing that the next apparition is the sight of you welcoming me home. Hard enough living without having vision To the left and the right of you They won't leave me alone Give me a cool hard back I see things, believe me You've never seen before But little things deceive me Like when you threw me out the door I'm a 